On today's show, why is everyone picking the Dallas Mavericks as their sleeper team coming out of the West? I'll explain why and Luka's MVP case on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic and this is Locked On Mavericks. Podcast. Locked On Mavericks, NBA champion. He is back. He is back. It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Let me know in the comment section. Rank your three MVP, pick, MVP picks. SGA, Jokic, Luka. Rank them. One to three. SGA, Jokic, Luka. Rank them. One to three. Who should win? Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Today's show, we'll get into Luka Jokic at SGA. I got a lot of stuff on that. I also want to talk about why everyone is picking the Mavericks all of a sudden. I'll talk about their defense. I'll talk about what's different with the Mavs defense before the trades, after the trades. I'll talk about Kyrie Irving. Give him some, give him some flowers and give him some credit for sure. And we'll do that because I think the Mavs have they have a fantastic four. And I'll explain. I'll explain that. But let's start here. Why is everyone picking the Dallas Mavericks? Seems all of a sudden like national media or people have all of a sudden caught on that this Mavericks team is hot. They're hot. This Mavs team is super, super hot right now. Hanson, they're so hot right now. This Mavs team is has been playing so well. Such great basketball. They just beat the Rockets, ending their 10-game win streak. This Mavs team has figured out how to play defense. This Mavs team it has the second-best record since uh, February 5th. They're 19-6 and six in that. Remember, the Mavericks in 2022 were 19-6 and six from February 4th to March 31st as well. Same exact record. This Mavs team is hot. Mavs team super hot. And all of a sudden, you get the Tim Leglers of the world starting to pick the Mavericks. Uh, Adam Mares as well, picking the Mavericks. He's like, it's going to be Nuggets Mavericks in the Western Conference Finals. Just, just write it up right now. And so I think there's four reasons why the Mavericks are being picked right now. And I'm going to call it the Mavs Fantastic Four. I'll talk about their defense. I'll talk about Kyrie. But we got to start with the number one thing. And the number one thing is the big thing. The number one, the biggest thing, the biggest reason why the Mavericks and people are picking the Mavericks is... It's that simple. It's that simple. It is that simple. It's Luka Doncic. He's playing at an MVP level. Whether he's going to win the award or not, he is playing MVP basketball. He is at an MVP level. On FanDuel, Jokic is minus 700, which is like a real heavy favorite. Luka is plus 500, and I remember him being like plus 1,000 recently, plus 1,100 recently. SGA has moved all the way down to plus 2,500, so that's a huge gap. Huge gap right there. Bigger gap between Luka and Jokic, or there's a bigger gap between Luka and SGA than there is between Luka and Jokic. So, Luka, why is he playing at MVP level? And let me kind of make the case for Luka for MVP too while I'm at it. Luka has done the most for his team. The most. He gets double teamed the most. He has the highest usage. Luka, 35 and a half usage. SGA, 31 usage. Jokic, 28 usage. Luka has the highest usage, and he gets double teamed the most out of anybody in the league. From second spectrum data, the most blitzes off of pick and roll. So Luka has the ball. Lively, Gafford, PJ, whoever, Kyrie sets a screen for him. And it gets doubled off the pick and roll. That's where Lucas sees the most double teams. It's not he gets the ball in isolation and then gets double teamed. Like just not a smart way to play basketball against Luca. But off of the blitzes off pick and rolls, Luca, 418 times he's been blitzed off of pick and roll this year. I'm gonna do a lot of these numbers just comparing, uh, just comparing Luca, Jokic, and SGA. But Luca has 400, 418. Times he's been blitzed off of a pick and roll. Number two in the NBA, Anthony Simons, 213. Like half, half. Luka gets blitzed off of pick and rolls double what anyone else has. Now, yes, he's running a lot more pick and rolls than some of these other guys, but Brunson, our old friend, 
198. He's third. Damian Lillard, 183. Devin Booker, 173. Don't double that guy. Anthony Edwards, 144. Steph Curry, 143. Like more, like double and sometimes triple more than anyone else in the NBA. And SGA is down at uh, 105 times. He's been blitzed off of pick and roll. And SGA has played more games than Luka. Jokic, he doesn't run the same pick and roll, so you can't really compare those one-to-one. -one. But off of post-ups, Jokic has been doubled or blitzed 89 times off of post-ups. Luka gets blitzed and doubled more than anyone else in the NBA. He's doing the most for his team. Leading the NBA in scoring right now. Four more points a game than SGA. Eight more points a game than Jokic. Luka has had five 30-point halves this season. Where he's had 30 points in a half. 24 minutes of basketball play. The Mavs are 4-0 in those games. And... It, and five 30-point halves is the most in the NBA since Luka did it last year when he had five as well. He's doing the most, scoring the most, getting doubled the most, blitz the most, highest usage, playmaking. Luka, three and a half more assists per game than SGA. Huge difference. Don't listen to ESPN. Well, they'll tell you that he's leading the league in assists. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith said that on accident today. He meant he meant steals, but he said he's SGA's leading the league in assists. He's like not even in the top 20. Uh, Luka, almost one more assist than Jokic as well. Playmaking, scoring, doing the most, all that. Clutch record. The Ma When Luka plays, the Mavs in the clutch, 19-7. and seven. Jokic and SGA both are 22-11 and 11 when they play. That's a worse record than 19-7. and seven. Luka better in the clutch, or at least his team has been better in the clutch. Talk about overall record, go for it. But in the clutch, when it matters, when you got the star, Luka's team has been better. The Mavs without Luka are three and six. And Jokic and SGA haven't missed as many games, but uh, without them, uh, SGA, or the Thunder are, are one and two without SGA, and the Nuggets are two and one. That's like such a small sample size. Team continuity. Talk about like who has, who has played, who he's played with, who Luka has played with. Not even counting the trade, like the trades have changed things, yes, for sure. But even before that, Luka had to deal with a lot of injuries, had to deal with a lot of people in and out, trying to figure out the lineups and all that. Here's a stat that kind of blew my mind. The most used five-man lineup with Luka this season has played 122 minutes. The most used five-man lineup with SGA this season has played 782 minutes. The most used five-man lineup with Nikola Jokic has played 895 minutes. <laughs> Almost 900 minutes. And Lucas has played 122. Continuity. He's playing with different guys all the time. All this different stuff. It's easier to play when you've played with these guys for a long time. When you've got the continuity. Luca is doing the harder thing. Use that, use that against him. Sure. Like, oh, well. But the continuity, it's not his fault. It's injuries. It's guys being in and out. It's trades. It's the changing of the team makeup. It's all that kind of stuff. Kid trying experiments and with different things. Trying to figure out what works for him. Luca's doing a harder thing than these other two guys. Not, doesn't have the luxury of getting to play with the same guys every night. And mentioned injuries. I went through rotation players playing about, you know, 18 minutes a game or more. I went through those players. How many games missed from the rotation players of the Mavs, the Thunder, and the Nuggets? Ready for this? Lucas team, 132 missed games between Kyrie's 22, Lively's 19, Green's 20, Maxi's 37, and Exum's 26. 132 missed games between between all those guys. I didn't even include Gafford and P.J. Washington. Didn't even include them. Nuggets, without Jokic, 37 missed games. Murray's missed 21. That's a big one. So you can't do the, well, Kyrie's missed a bunch of games. Murray, same thing. SGA and the Nuggets, 31 missed games. That's it. Mavs have 100 more missed games among their rotation players. And... Of the, of the Thunder's 31 missed games among rotation players, Kenrich Williams counts for 13 of those. That's almost half. So, Luka is doing the harder thing. More, get, more players have missed time. Playing with less continuity. Better in the clutch. Scoring more. Assisting more. More usage. Double team more. Harder, 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 harder. Everything Luka has done has been harder, and he's had these MVP moments. He's 19-7 and seven in the clutch, shooting 45, 40, and 76 in the clutch. He's had the 73-point game. Huge. 50-point game, 15-assist game on Christmas against the Suns. Massive game. That was before the trades. That was before the Mavs were playing great. 
He had the 49-point game with the flick shot to win the game against Brooklyn at the beginning of the season. You remember he was pinned up against the right side of the sideline and hit the game winner. He had the 31-point first half against Houston to break their 11-win streak. And he's had big wins against the Nuggets. He had 37-10. and 10. Against the Timberwolves, they won. He had 34-8. and 8. Against the Thunder, he had 32-8-9 and 9 in just 31 minutes. Beaten Sacramento twice. He's beaten Phoenix twice. He's had big wins, MVP moments, doing the harder thing. Luka Doncic, MVP. That's his case. And for all those reasons, in the Fantastic Four, he's Mr. Fantastic. So he can do anything. Put him in any situation, double team him, blitz him. This lineup, that lineup, this guy out, this guy out, doesn't matter. He's Mr. Fantastic. He's can extend to whatever level you need him to. Questionable before the game, game time decision with his, with his knee, He'll go out there and score 30 and a half. He's Mr. Fantastic. Doesn't matter. Coming up, let me tell you about the human torch, Kyrie Irving. Another reason why a lot of people are picking the Mavericks, Kyrie. I'll explain why. Coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Man, therapy this week for me, I needed it. And sometimes you're like, I just need to talk to somebody and I just need to walk through this situation and try and figure out, what do I think? What do I feel? Why do I think this way? Why do I feel this way? And they're not going to just come in there and tell you, look, I got, the, I got the answer for you. Let me Just do this. Just do this. No one no one needs that. What they're going to do at BetterHelp, I've used their services before. I enjoyed it. What they're going to do, they sit down with you, ask you the right questions, pointed questions. They ask you, you know, an unbiased, like they take an unbiased look at your life and the things that you bring up to them and walk you through some of your feelings and your emotions. Therapy can be different for everybody. Most of us have bigger problems than our sports teams, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible, suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash lockdownmba to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash lockdownmba. Give BetterHelp a try. If you don't know where else to turn and you need to talk to somebody, BetterHelp will be helpful for you. Go to betterhelp.com slash lockdownmba. I need to recover your beer. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for stepping in and listening to the show, whether it's on the podcast platform or on YouTube. If you're watching sports on e- on Fox or ESPN and you're watching some of these shows, you got to turn it down because there's all the shouting. Check out Lockdown Sports today on YouTube or the Amazon Fire 24-7 stream. Go check that, go check that out. I just moved my video completely out of the out of the way. Uh, go, check out the, uh, go check out Lockdown Sports today, Amazon Fire, and on YouTube. All right, just on video, I just sent myself into a different dimension. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I talked about Luca. He's the he's Mr. Fantastic, the leader of the Fantastic Four. He can stretch. He's got the he can he's malleable. He can fit any situation. He can give you whatever you need at any given point to win a basketball game. The Human Torch is Kyrie. He can just go on a run whenever he wants. Kyrie this season has had 41 quarters where he scores 10 or more points. That's 25th in the NBA, and he's missed 22 games. So that's good. 25 of those times that he scored 10 points in a quarter have come in the third or fourth quarter. That's 22nd in the NBA. He can go off at any given moment. And that ability and his willingness to allow Luka to do his thing, to set the tone, to do all that, Kyrie's willingness to be the second guy and to be the human torch that he can just flame on boom let's go whenever he whenever they need to beginning of the third quarter beginning of the fourth quarter we've seen it countless times where he's been the one to give him a boost of offense if you've got that guy next to to Luca, who some people have called the best offensive player they've ever seen I think Ime Odoka just said that the other night the best offensive player he's ever seen to be able to turn it on whenever against any defense against whatever they whatever another team puts in front of him doesn't matter what Luka's doing. doesn't matter what the other team's game plan is. Kyrie can get you buckets. And if he can get you buckets next to Luka, who can also get you buckets whenever because he's Mr. Fantastic, that's a combo right there. And that's a combo that works in the playoffs too. And that's a combo that'll, that'll work for anybody. And that's one of the reasons why everybody's picking the Mavericks. Starts with Luka, but the combination of Kyrie too. They can work together. They've got the play that I love, the Luke-Kai divide where they just pass back and forth between the two of them and spread apart slowly until one of the defenders commits to, to doubling the other one and then the other one gets a wide open shot. They've got, you know, you can screen Kyrie screening for Luka. Luka can screen for Kyrie and run plays off of that. 
Look, Kyrie can get stuff at the, he's one of the best finishers in the NBA around the rim. He can hit mid-range stuff. Kyrie's pull-up threes lately have been incredible. He can just, in transition, all right, you need a pull-up three right here? Bet, nobody's expecting me to take this shot right now? I'll take it. Him accepting his role as this, you know, 1B to Luka's 1A, and I've seen a lot of people say, well, he's he's the Batman and Luka's the Robin. Kyrie has said that that's not true. <laughs> okay, okay. I know you're a Kyrie stan. I know this is what you're here for. I know you're here for Kyrie, but Kyrie has even said that Luka's one of the best players to ever do it. And that he's the one, and he's and Kyrie's there to support. And he's accepting that role and has been awesome in that role all season. Or everyone in Boston media and anywhere else that, that thought that there was going to be an issue with Kyrie, including myself, that thought, all right, let's just wait around to see when there's going to be an issue for Kyrie. Give him credit. Give him and the Mavs credit. There have not been any issues. There have not been anything even like close to an issue with Kyrie. There's not been anything distracting. There's not been anything but positive stuff coming out of the camp of Kyrie and the Mavericks. And he's been such a positive, like, he's been such a positive force on the Mavericks, like, roster. All the guys look up to him. You look at look at the way Hardy watches him play on the bench. Look at the way Hardy talks to him if you see him in some kind of, like, uh, clip from, you know, you know, the bench or something like that. It's just different. And it adds to this team. Uh, listen to Derek Lively. When Kyrie hit that game-winning shot, Derek Lively runs by the camera and goes, goes, in Kyrie, we trust. And he's just running by. And he said it again later in a different day. In Kyrie, we trust. He's only added to this team. He's not taken away in any way. And that's the thing with Kyrie in the past. It's like, okay, what does he add to the team? But he's also taken away in this other area. There hasn't been any taken away. There's been no negative so far of Kyrie. This season has been amazing. Now, he's been hurt. He missed 22 games, but he's been playing a lot lately and playing every game. We haven't even heard of, like, Kyrie being questionable with an injury lately. Kyrie, the human torch. One of the reasons why people are picking the Mavericks because you've got Mr. Fantastic and the human torch working together, doing some great things, playing off of each other and all that. Next reason why a bunch of people are picking the Mavericks, the thing. The Mavs defense is the thing. It's different. It's been a lot different than it has been in the past. It really is just adding Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington. I went through and I went through all the numbers and I tried to go through and be like, all right, what's different? What's different about this team? What are they allowing? What kind of shots are they allowing? Have they changed? The they, their defense is the exact same. They rotate. They need, you know, you got to replace the other guy when, when you go out and rotate over here. It's all predicated on effort and intentionality and communication. Thing is, they just have the, they have the horses now. They've got the guys that can do that. They've got the thing. We've got two centers in Gafford and Lively now that can come in there and defend the rim, that can defend a little bit in space, that can get rebounds, that can finish plays, that can block shots, that can get steals. They've been such a game changer on defense. And then you've got P.J. Washington who can just fill in in any little spot here or there. That's been huge. And so coming up, I'm going to tell you one stat that has completely changed for the Dallas Mavericks. On defense. We'll talk about that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app so you can go check out all the different uh, you can check out all the different uh, events, concerts, music, theater, all kinds of stuff. I went to see Les Mis over the over the the winter break earlier, and I went to Game Time and I got the tickets way cheaper than I would have gotten them anywhere else. So go check out Game Time, see what's available for you, and while you're there. Use the code. Uh, use the code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You get flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing, views from your seat, lowest price guaranteed, Game Time ticket coverage, all that kind of stuff is super important. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use that code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Shut it down. All right, Isaac, let's get into the thing. The Mavs defense. What's different about it? You've got the two centers. You've got P.J. Washington. You've got Derek Jones Jr., who's been awesome as well. The defense is allowing the same exact type of shots. I went through, and I, I like to go through a lot of times with cleaning the glass, and I like to check through, all right, what is the defense allowing? So you go through, and you're like, all right, defense shooting frequency. So you go through, and... 
you say, all right, how many, what percentage of shots are they allowing at the rim? What percentage of shots are they allowing from the mid-range? What percentage of shots are they allowing from three? And they're almost the exact same. Cross the board. The Mavs are allowing the same types of shots. And you go through the Mavs defense, you know, before the trades and after the trades. They're allowing the same types of shots. But the one stat that's completely changed that makes this team from a bat, like a, a below average defensive team to a good defensive team, field goal percentage at the rim. Before the trades, teams were shooting. You ready? You ready for this? 70.3% at the rim. If you're playing the Mavericks before these trades, you get to the rim and like seven times out of 10, you're going to hit the shot. As long as you get there. That was 28th in the NBA in that time frame. Since the trades, February 10th, 62.6%, which still sounds like a lot, but that's third in the NBA. They went from 28th in the NBA in field goal percentage at the rim allowed to third in the NBA in the, those different time frames. Huge difference. Not all the centers, not all just the centers, but it is the centers for sure. Denying stuff at the rim. Denying guys from, from going there. Deterring players from even trying to go to the rim. And it's P.J. Washington, Derek Jones Jr., and the Mavs defense kicking it up a notch. Sitting up in their chair, sitting forward, and being like, all right, let's lock in now. Team believing in themselves, team having belief. And guess what? The 62.6% at the rim and the Mavs defense being really good as it has been also includes that five-game stretch where we thought the Mavericks were terrible. <laughs> and now they're back. So another reason why people are picking the Mavericks is because their defense is viable now. They can defend against different teams. They've got a small ball lineup with Maxi at the five. He's switchable. P.J. Washington at the four. Derek Jones Jr. Dante Exum comes in. Luka and Kyrie playing solid defense for their spots and their position and their role. They've got big lineup with Lively and Maxi or Gafford and Maxi and P throw P.J. at the three. Luka as a 6'8 point guard being big. They've got big lineups. They've got small lineups. They've got quick lineups. They've got rim protection. They've got perimeter defense. They've got the stuff now. Nico Harrison has done an amazing job from one year to the next, retooling this team and adding stuff to it. The additions of Derek Jones Jr., Dante Exum, Derek Lively, P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford have complete, I mean, none of those players played on the Mavs last year. And now the Mavs defense has completely changed because of it. Turns out if you had six solid defensive players to your team, your team gets better defensively. Turns out. You replace a Christian Wood with a Daniel Gafford, you get way better defensively. You replace a Davis Bertans with a Derek Lively, and you become way better defensively. Turns out. <laughs> that works out for you, it turns out. Uh, the, the new guys, though, Daniel Gafford, has the number one on-off difference on the Mavericks defensively. The Mavericks are 7.7 .7 points per possessions per, per 100 possessions better defensively when Daniel Gafford plays. When Gafford plays, the Mavericks allow 108 points per 100 possessions. That's elite. When P.J. Washington, PJ Washington's got the second one, minus 5.6. They're, they're allowing 5.5 points per 100 possessions less when P.J. Washington's on the court. When they're playing together, the Mavs' defensive rating drops to 106.8. Elite. Mavs are an elite defensive team when Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington are playing together. And the Mavs' new starting five with Gafford, P.J. Washington, Derek Jones Jr., Kyrie Irving, and Luka Doncic. Defensive rating of 95.5. When's the last time we saw a defensive rating of 95.5? You know what? I'm going to sit here and I'm going to look for it because that just shows that this, I mean, this team is operating on a different level now. They've become a completely different team. And that's one of the reasons why the Mavericks are getting picked by so many people all over the place. I mean, the lowest defensive rating right now is 108 this season. Last season, it was 109. <laughs> I'm just going to skip to like, let me skip to like. In 2017, it was 102. <laughs> I don't know when. Uh, here we go. 2014, 98 was the lowest defensive rating. <laughs> we got to go, you got to go far. Here we go. Uh, Chicago Bulls in 2012. Boston Celtics in 2012. 97. Let's go to those Mavs in 
Even the Mavs in 2011 had 104 defensive rating, and they were really good defensively. Like a hundred and like ninety five defensive rating is it's elite. That is elite. They're playing elite defense with this crew. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the difference between Mavericks of the past and the Mavericks now. The Mavericks in the past would have to just rely on the three, and then hope that they can score. Kid, how many times did kids say this? Like how many times did kids say? You gotta ask them. I'm just the coach. No, not that. How many times did he just say? Well, you know, we, our offense is our best defense. We've got to score 130 if they score 125. How many times did he say that? He was right. Now they've got defense. And now they can win games where they you know, allow the team to score under 100, 100, under 100 points or turn on their defense when the other team is hitting. But allowing less shots, at the, like allowing a lower field goal percentage at the rim has changed their defense completely. Now there's nothing easy. Take away the easy stuff, then everything becomes hard. Wow. That'll preach. <laughs> Take away the easy stuff. Everything becomes hard. Hit play f- <laughs> mate. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Amazing. So, the thing, the Fantastic Four member, the defense is the thing. That is what's changed, and that's one of the reasons why everybody's picking the Mavericks. Took me a while to try and come up with a Sue Storm. <laughs> She's the invisible woman. I went with Jason Kidd. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm watching, just like you guys. Jason Kidd is the is the invisible member of the Fantastic Four because I don't think he's going to get credit. And you've got people like me that called for him to be done with the Mavericks because of that stretch. The Mavericks, when they're bad, the bottom can fall out. We've seen it. But he's completely changed this team, and he's empowered this team. And I know Reggie makes fun of, like, well, we're going to start calling him the, the Zen Master <laughs> if this works for this team. But, hey, it's working. And now we've got two, se- two different seasons, two of three seasons now, where the Mavs have gone on an insane great run at the end of the season. As soon as they figure themselves out, and Sue Storm was kind of the one that kept the Fantastic Four together. You know, she was like the glue of it. And maybe Kid is the glue that when things are going well, he can he holds it together, and man, this, this team is flying on all cylinders right now. The glue between Luca and Kyrie working out. Maybe Kid has more to do with that than we think. The glue with having confidence in some of these guys, sticking with Tim Hardaway, sticking with, you know, some of these guys. Putting Derek Lively on the bench when he'd started all season and knowing that, all right, if we make this change, we've got to know that I can't lose Derek Lively because we still need him. Knowing that Dante Exum could play the role that he did and giving him the opportunity. I mean, you got to give credit to, to Jason Kidd with what he's done on this team. And I'll admit when I'm I'll admit when I'm wrong about stuff, I, they can't remove him now. <laughs> Would the team be better? Maybe they wouldn't have as many low points. But right now they're on a high. And right now they're playing really well. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are picking the Mavericks. The other thing about coaching, I'll say, I did this the other day when I talked about title contenders. Are the Mavericks a real title contender? Go through coaching recently. And if you think coaching is going to hold the Mavericks back, think about some of the teams that have made the finals or won the finals recently. Phoenix. Phoenix. Made the finals. Monty Williams is their coach. How's he doing in Detroit? Milwaukee won the finals with Mike Budenholzer. He got removed like two seasons after that. Frank Vogel, same thing. Won the title with the Lakers and then got fired. 2015. Do you remember who coached the Cavs in 2015? David Blatt. Not in the NBA anymore. Fired. 2012. OKC. Scott Brooks coached him to the finals. Then he went to the Wizards. Then didn't work in the Wizards. And now he's his assistant. So... Coaching is not as big of a, of, of, of a thing. You just got to have a fine game plan and you've got to have stars that, that know what they're doing and you've got to have cohesiveness between everybody. And I think Kid has done that. I think he's done enough. And so should we still fault him when the team is, is bad like they were? Sure. But you also got to give him credit too. And I got to give him credit. And I will right here. Giving him credit for this. He's the glue that holds him together. I guess that's why he's the Sue Storm and the Invisible and the Invisible the Invisible Woman. So, there you go. That's why people are picking the Mavericks because they're the Fantastic Four right now. They they're the team that's together. They've got different abilities. They're they're all working through them. They've got the malleable Mr. Fantastic and Luca. They've got the Human Torch and Kyrie. They've got the Thing, which is the defense, and they've got the glue that holds them together. And the Invisible Woman, Jason Kidd, just doesn't roll off the tongue as well. That's the. That's the one I'm the least proud of of all these. 
There you go. That's why people are picking the Mavericks. That's why Luka, I think, should win MVP. Go and check out our episode tomorrow. Mavs Warriors, pretty big game. Not as big of a game as we thought they were going to be. We thought this was going to be playing for the play-in, and now this is completely different. So check out that. We'll have that episode tomorrow. Me and Slightly will be back. Guys, thanks for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom.